Hi, Catherine here with Circle Art Designs. Today we will be working on Project 4 from the December Bargain Bead Box. This is the last project I will be doing from the December Bargain Bead Box. Even though I know there are some beads I haven't used yet, I will put them in my stash and I'll use them later. They're always wonderful to have stash builders. Our project today is called Chain and Leather Appetite Necklace. And the appetite refers to the beautiful teardrop pendant that we have as the focal point of this necklace. So let's turn our attention to the mat and get started. So as I turn my eyes onto my work table, I'm met with this beautiful piece of glass. I'm sure you've all seen it before. Give thanks to the Lord. And I was thinking about that this weekend when my husband and I were doing our own morning prayer. And we started out in darkness because we have these big bay windows and, and we were getting ready to read scripture and it was totally black outside. But little by little, without us even knowing it, the sun came out, the yard brightened with the light of the sun, and I was reminded that that's what God does for me in my life. And I know that He loves me because of the little changes I see in my world. How about you? What are you thankful for today? Okay, let's turn our eyes to the mat. So starting at the top with my leather. This is leather cording, but you can use any type of leather you would like. You could even use, um, oh, rattan. Or, there's just lots of things you could use, but I'm doing leather cording. I want a 22 inch necklace. So I divide that up and I get 11 inches for both sides of the necklace. So the leather itself will be 11 times 2 or 22 inches. That's how much leather you're going to need for this piece. Next, going on around, I have the leather end caps. And really these caps depend on what type of leather you're using. So make sure when you pick your leather that you have caps that will go on it. Otherwise, you're going to be making a trip to the store. I have done that on more than one occasion. Moving right along, right underneath the leather end caps. Oh, and for these end caps, I use E6000. It has to dry overnight, but it's for leather and metal and ceramics and all kinds of things, and I really like it. So it's not on the list, but E6000, you will need to put these caps on. All right, right below that is a two bead of your choice. This is a two bead of about an inch that I had in my own stash. And so it has beautiful little flowers on it. I loved it. But whatever you'd like to use as a bead that is different from the main beads in your necklace. Going on down the page, we have the, from the Bargain Bead Box, we have the six millimeter moonstone glass beads. We've used those before, and even after I did this necklace, I still have quite a few of them left over that will go in my stash. Across from that, you have the eight millimeter London Blue Agate Round Beads. These are dyed agates. I've also used quite a few of those and still have quite a few. So I'm really pleased with how many beads we got. Always wanting to build up that stash. Then across from that, from the Bargain Bead Box again, so the last two have been from that, but this one also is, and this is your 20 by 12 millimeter swirl toggle clasp. Now, I put out a half a toggle 
and a whole toggle because I thought I would use the toggle for the end of this necklace, but I, I ended up not using this. So really, you just need the circular part of the toggle. This will make the center finding you use on your necklace where your chain and your leather and your beautiful um, teardrop pendant will will hang from. And speaking of teardrop pendant, I miss that. Go back up to that beautiful blue teardrop. This is from the Bargain Bead Box. It's a 39 millimeter appetite teardrop pendant. And I don't know what anybody else got, but mine is so rich in color. The blues just swirl in it. There's light and dark and medium and navy. It's just gorgeous. And so uh, that's what I will be using as the focal of this necklace. I did go on yesterday to see if they had any more of these in on the website and they did not. But I did notice that they do have some December bead boxes that are still up. And I can tell you, it is well worth the money, at least for me, because they had some outstanding pieces this time. Okay, on you, on back over to the center, you'll see a pinch bell. This is just your regular pinch bells. You can use a jump ring for this, but I used a pinch bell. Now, for this pinch bell, I took the top of it off because it was a solid pinch bell at the top and it would not fit on my findings. So I just took that off and used a jump ring to attach it to the finding. And I will show you that in the clip. Then from a bargain bead box again, you have the two by five millimeter Rondell spacer beads. And I have a tendency to call these little donuts. So if I do that, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's what I'm talking about. And then right up at the top is the chain of your choosing. Now this chain we will be using in one to one and a half inch lengths. So make sure it's something you can cut easily. Besides uh, this, you will need chain nose pliers, curved nose pliers, straight nose pliers. Um, you will also possibly need, oh, and you will need loopers because we will be making components. So in order to make the loopers, something that I did not picture, I, I just forgot to pull it out, was... Um, I'm using three inch silver eye pins to make my components. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my push bell, my pinch bell push, pinch bell. I'm gonna open it up a little bit and I'm going to put it right in the top in the hole that's been pre-drilled in this beautiful Appetite uh, Teardrop Pendant. Now, I am closing this with my fingers because first of all, I don't want to scratch it. But if your fingers aren't real strong for this, then you will need to go ahead and use pliers, but make sure that they're smooth pliers. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my length of leather, make sure that the little leather cap that I have works, and this is my Gorilla Glue. It dries clear. I'm going to hold these two ends together and put a nice dollop of Gorilla Glue on it so that it will fill the little hole. Uh, cap really well. I don't want to be sparing with this because, you know, sometimes necklaces get pulled on and I want to make sure it's really in that cap. So I'm going to take it just like this. I've held them where they were even at the top and I'm going to just stuff it right. <laughs> I'm stuffing it, people. <laughs> right down into that cap 
just like that. Now, don't worry if you have a little spillage. You can take something and just very carefully wipe around the endings. And once it's dry, it cuts off pretty well, too. Now then, I'm going to go ahead. And I thought about cutting it at this point, but I really want to make sure that the chains and the leather are the same length. So let's just set that to side and we'll go on with the next after I clean my Gorilla Glue. Uh, make sure you really wipe these off well because I have can't tell you how many times I've gotten in a hurry. I've come back, opened the glue to use it another time and I could not get that glue off, that cap off for anything because the glue had made it one. All right, here are the eye pins that I have picked, and we're going to make our components for these. And I will start off with the moonstone glass beads. Then I'm going to put on one of these rondelles or donuts. And then I'm going to put on one of the agate. I just love these agates. I love the way the color swirls in them. So appropriate with the appetite pendant. Then I'm putting on another donut and a moonstone glass bead. So I'm going to go ahead and do three of these for each, uh, for the first side, and I'll do two for the other side. Now, we end up using more than just three, but I really wanted to check the length whenever I got to the finished product or whenever I started putting these together. So again, one more time. Oh, I'm going to do the other side first. So for my tube bead, I'm using these rondelles. You could use any rondelle. It's just that if you don't put something on the end of these lovely tube beads, they just kind of jostle around. So I got the donut or the rondelle and the tube bead and then another of the rondelle spacers and that's what that's going to look like so that's the one side of the necklace and then on the other side of the necklace i'll go ahead and do three of the first component we did so again that is a moon stone glass bead a rondelle come on Catherine, a rondelle and an agate, a rondelle, and a moonstone. Now, I did not start with the moonstone, nor did I finish with the, I'm sorry, with the rondelle or finish with it, but you could. You can, you know, any way you would like to put these together to make it your own. And so let's just go ahead and let's get these other two going and then we will use our loopers to make the loops for these. This is going to be a really pretty, pretty piece. I already have somebody who wants this piece. In fact, I said, well, I haven't even got it finished. And they said, well, just let me know when it goes up in the shop because I want to buy it. And I said, okay. But I really wanted to share this with you. This is a wonderful technique. You could do it in blues or yellows or reds, oranges, grays and blacks. It doesn't really matter. It, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous way to use toggles as your findings and to really showcase pendants that you really love. Okay, when I am using my looper, I bring it across the jaws. We'll have lots of time bring it across the jaws till it meets, the bead meets right up against that jaw. And I make sure that the bottom is going the same direction as the loop is going to go when you make the loop, because otherwise you have to straighten it with your pliers to get them in the same plane. So through the little hole on the far side, make sure the loop is in the same plane and mash the handles and it gives you a nice little loop. They don't always close, but I try to go ahead and get all my loops done at once, and then I'll close all of them at once. Some people have great luck with these things closing. Whoop, dropped it. I got too 
too far ahead of myself. With these things working the first time, you know, and closing loops, but that has never been me. If there's a secret to you, I haven't figured it out yet. Across the jaws, make sure the bead touches, make sure the end's on the same plane. Mash your handles, it'll make a little loop, cut off the excess, and you have got your dangles ready. Okay, so let's go ahead and close these loops. What we're going to do using our straight nose pliers is I bring the wire completely down so that it's touching the straight wire. Then I raise my loop up just a little bit so it's over the center of my component. Again, put it in till it goes down. Close that over. Do you see how it bends? That's why you're going to want to raise it, move it back so it's in the center of your component. Otherwise, everything will kind of hang whopper gaggled. But it's real simple. It just is taking your straight nose pliers, closing it up, and then making it go over the center of your component. Now this next step, I have taken my chain, I've counted out 11 loops, and on the 12th loop, I'm going to cut it. I always use a needle or something like that as my spacer, and I just cut the next link from the one that I have just counted. And it's just that simple. These run a little over an inch in the chain that I chose to use. I'm recounting to make sure I have my 11. And I'm going to do it again. Count off 11. Put the needle in. I can hold it onto the mat or not. Just as long as I get it in those jaws before I drop the loop and have to count it again. And so let's do it again. Count 11. Put the needle in. Get a hold of the loop just past that. Snip. And I've got matching pieces of chain. Now for this section, I'm going to start out with four chains for each side of the chain part of this necklace. I actually, once I got to measuring, um, I, might, I ended up putting one more chain on. But to start with, I'm going to do four chains for each side. And so you don't have to watch all this. I will meet you back here in just a moment. And we are back. So I'm going to lay out each side of my chain portion of this necklace. So on one side, it will be all components with the agate and the moonstone. But on the other side, it will start with a chain. Oop, I've got this out of place. I hope I catch it. It should start with a chain, a bead component, your tube component, and then a bead component. I know I catch it because I put it on right the correct way. Now for this, I'm using my smallest jump rings, and these are over jump rings. I'm getting as close to the size and the shape of the links in the chain. I've got that laid out. I'm checking to make sure that the glue is gluing okay on my um, leather portion of the necklace because I want to make sure that I don't need more glue in it. And so let's set that aside. And then we'll go back to what I was doing. All right. You say, well, why haven't you cut it? Well, again, it's because I want to make sure that these match. So I'm going to grab a chain, 
and put it on this. I think these are two, they may be three millimeter, but I think they're two millimeter oval jump rings. I put my chain on first and then my component, then holding the jump ring between two chain nose pliers or a chain and a curve, I close it, make sure that it's closed because these little bitty jump rings are real easy to miss just the slightest opening and it only takes a slight opening for your necklace to come apart. Again, between two, twist one side of the wrist, put on the chain. Let's see if I can get this on here. When you're working with these little bitty components, um, sorry, the little bitty jump rings, you have to just barely hold it with your chain nose pliers or your plier nose gets in the way of the chain itself. Now I'm putting on the other end of that component. So for one side of the necklace, I'm starting out with a chain, a bead component, and a chain. Just like that. Then I will go ahead and take the jump ring and I will open it up. And then I'm going to go ahead. You see how I'm positioning it, trying to get just barely hang on to it between two chain snopes pliers, twist one side of the wrist. Then I'm going to take my chain again, even though it's connected to a component, put it on first and then another component. Twist the wrist and make sure that closes real well. Now, I have told this story before. First of all, I like using the ovals for this because, well, there's oval links. But the other thing is, it's where the opening for this link is. Since it is on the side instead of on the top, it is less likely to be pulled apart. Chain goes on again, and then the component that you've been building on, and then close it up with a twist of the wrist. So that's why I really, really like using ovals. I was listening to a lady who has a channel called Thunder Horse Descendants, and she was telling why she used oval jump rings, and I have to agree with her, I really really like them whenever I can use them in the design and they look exactly or not exactly I should say but they look like they belong in that design. So we're going ahead and put this com this chain on not the component. See I almost put the wrong thing on. You know it may not make a difference but for me personally, if I'm doing the same thing over and over again when I'm making the piece, I'm less likely to mess it up. So that is one side of the chain part of this necklace. Now for the next one, and I'm about to re realize exactly what I did. Mm, what is the problem here? So I'm going to do it again. I don't know how long it takes me to go. Wait a minute. Oh, yes. There you go. So I'll meet you back when I get this one done. And I thought we could use a picture of what exactly I was talking about. On one side, I started with a component, a chain, a component, a chain, a component, and a chain. On the other side, I did chain component, chain, two bead, chain, and component. And that's what I'm going to get together now. See you in just a sec. If you haven't already, would you take a moment and like this video and leave a comment? And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and sharing would be amazing. Thank you. And we are back. Now, once I measured this, I realized that I was going to be a little short 
on the front part of this chain of the necklace. So I am adding a chain to the bottom of the necklace at one side and the top of the necklace on the other. The other reason I am doing this is once I laid the toggle finding out, I realized I didn't really want a component, a bead component, to sit right there on the toggle finding itself. So I went ahead and cut 11 links and I'm adding that right now using the same small oval jump rings. It will make it um, a little, I'm sorry, what it will do is it will make it even as opposed to slightly whopper, well I would say whopper gaggled, but it's one side up against the other. But that's okay because I like that. If I wanted to have kept them uneven or asymmetrical in their design, what I would have done was just made a longer chain on the end of one and a shorter chain on that end and just flipped it around. But I decided to go ahead and go with this one. So we're getting these chains up on there and then we will be ready for the next step. All right, there you go. So we have this, um, see how it, now this, it makes it line up. I was really thinking I would just make one side off center from the other side, but you know what? I like this. And by the time I decided how I could do that without getting it much bigger, I'd already cut this chain. So I went, okay, that's what we're going with. <laughs> Okay, here you go. So now I am cutting off the ends for this so I can check and see um, if it will fit. And I'm sorry, I think I'm doing that off camera. But I just wanted to make sure that I got them even and that they would fit. Oh, I know what I was doing. I was measuring it to see how long it was. And it actually is the 11 that I wanted. So we're going to bring this over here and we're going to put those ends together just like we did the first time and we're going to put a nice dollop of the Gorilla Glue for leather, metal, ceramics, etc. And then we're going to put it right on there and I'm going to set it to one side to dry. There you go. I'm checking to make sure that my cords are coming out on the right side because I have glued them and twisted them in the process before. So let's set this to one side. It will need to dry some and go ahead and clean off our nozzle so that it, the cap doesn't stick to it. And then we'll go on to the next section. Believe it or not, we are almost through. So once I have got the added chain on the top and bottom of each side of the chain part of this necklace, I measure it, that's what you're seeing, and I am going to come out about five inches too short. So I went ahead and measured out five inches of my chain, snipped it just like we did the one inch, and I'm going to go ahead and put them on with a slightly bigger oval jump ring. If you have watched my videos for any length of time, you will know that I hate having beads in the back, at the back of my neck. So I always make sure there is enough chain link starting at the back that I don't have to use uh, beads back there and so that five inches will be just perfect along with the leather on the other side. Sorry about the jump. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Okay so what I'm doing is I am adding that length to the back of the necklace. This will be five inches on each side of the necklace. 
And again, I'm using the four millimeter oval jump rings. You can use any jump ring that you like. It really depends on how you like your necklace to look. And these are ready to go on the findings. So I have placed my jump, I'm sorry, my finding where I want it. And I am using the toggle with the small end up. I'm again using that four millimeter for the toggle. I'm going to put on one side of the chain, making sure, now my chain is not straight. If you are looking, I had pulled it lapped over each other, but it doesn't really matter just yet because you only got one chain going on. But I am going to put both sides, there you go, both sides of this chain section of the necklace onto one of the ovals. Then I'm going to put it on the small portion of the toggle as my finding for the focal and close that up so that it should look just like that. Now you know if you like this, you don't have to put the leather on it at all. I was just trying to give people options because I love, I have a look and I love this look. But anyway, so then I'm going to take, I'm going to open up another one of the ovals and I'm going to place the leather portion of the necklace on the toggle on the other side. And I chose the smaller port part of the toggle because it gives it less room to jump around on. Okay, let's see if we can't get this closed. Catch it and close it. There you go. And so it, it will look just like this. Both sides of the necklace coming off of the toggle. And then I am going to add that pinch bell with a jump ring onto the toggle finding. And the reason I am doing this, as I said in the beginning, whenever we were talking about pinch bells, is my, some pinch bells have this little section in them where you can, can mash into it and it will allow your findings to just slip on but mine aren't like that. They are soldered solid. So I had to cut that off in order to get it onto the finding. And I'm having a bit of a trouble getting this last one closed. There you go. The finger says, yes, it's closed. You've got this. It's good. And so that is how the two sections of the necklace will look. And that toggle is going to go just like I mean, the, the pinch bell is going to go just like that onto the taco finding. Open up another of the ovals. I'm trying to be consistent until I get to the back. And then I'm going to place it onto the bottom section of the circle for the toggle. And I have my focal completed. Isn't that pretty? I just love that. Now then, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open another of these jump rings. And I am going to use a double jump ring on the section with the leather. It doesn't need it, but I really like, I'm sorry, not the leather, or the section with the, um, the, teardrop focal. And the reason I'm doing, it doesn't really need it, but I really like the look of a double jump ring. And this top, this pinch bell will take a double jump ring. So there we go. Isn't that pretty? I just love it. Here we go now. What am I doing now? I'm so sorry. I made this lower so that you could see more but i have this teeny tiny little screen on my laptop computer and sometimes i can't tell what i'm 
doing. Oh, I see. Because the the jump the oval jump ring jumped out whenever I was doing this. So I am now putting a second jump ring into this pinch bell. Like I said, it's not necessarily no, I'm sorry, it's not necessary. The one will hold it. But I, isn't that just beautiful, the, the look with the double jump rings? I think it gives it a more, not just substantial look, but it makes the jump ring part of the design. And I really, really like that. Now, as I said, whenever I first started, I had pulled these out for us to use those as a closure on this necklace. But at first I decided it's already 22 inches long, plus the findings. I can just use this as an over the head necklace. And that's what I'm showing you now. I am putting a jump ring on each side of the chain, and then I will just automatically put that into the leather Big, uh, the leather cap that's on the other side and that's all I was going to do to this and you wouldn't have to mess with a closure and I thought it was just lovely be very careful when you're putting these together and make sure both the leather section and the bead section are not twisted but when I had someone come in and saw that I was doing this they said oh I would really like a clasp and I said well I have matching toggle that I can put on the back and they said no I don't want that I would like to have a lobster claw clasp on it so in the pictures that you see it will have a lobster claw clasp because that's what the person who is buying it wanted close that up and this necklace could be finished but afterwards I had to change it Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have really enjoyed this video. Isn't that lovely? I just love this necklace. And whether it's a single or it's a one with a toggle or a lobster claw, I love it. I hope you have a wonderful beading adventure of your own today. And I will see you next week. God bless y'all. Catherine, circleartdesigns.square.site Oh, the last picture is the lady who got it, wearing it. God bless y'all.